Le beau mariage. The good marriage. What a beautiful concept. You can achieve that by reading you know, seven principles of making marriage work by John Goodman, a classical psychology, and avoiding the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Uh, mentioned that content, uh, defensiveness, stonewalling, and uh, criticism. One of the uh, best 1,000 movies ever made, as listed by the New York Times, you can find on the site of the newspaper, and you can take part in the challenge by um, checking boxes for the movies you've seen. Uh, we're there. 60... Scene, including this one. Um, I must say, Eric Romer, Claire's knee, L'amour d'un après-midi, Manui, Shemot. Yes, we love them. Although using love is wrong when abused. When when in this context, in fact, according to Thomas, that's a short story. Uh, and there's some comments on our site if you want to um, <clears throat> see more about that. Uh, uh, this one is a bit outre. I wouldn't put it among our very own best 1000 movies ever made. Um, largely due to the main character, Sabine, portrayed by Beatrice Roman, uh, who is a strange uh, human being, uh, moody, true, there's reason there, so the, the, this film has a lot going for it, now that I'm forced to Think about it and admit it, and then backtrack maybe, put it in, putting it in a month. It's 250. Um, because from the beginning, she's she's in the first few minutes um, uh, with this lover who's married and he's talking on the phone and uh, children, and, uh, and then she, she feels uh, alienated, she feels uh, betrayed. I mean, with this betrayal, again, complex feeling situations, every time that. Well, yeah, let's get back and say one of the best movies, indeed. Um, and so she says, okay, no more married man. Le beau mariage. I need a marriage plan. Having determined all that, she talks with her friend, um, Clarice, who tries to help. And she's presenting her... She's, she's introducing her to the cousin, Clarice's cousin, aka Edmond, André de Solino. Well, now that's a spectacular actor, um, who means so much in that he, he's the one reading A la recherche du temps perdu. I'm not sure if it's all. There's one version in, in which um, I remember listening to it through the woods near Rosena, near the center of the country where we stayed for, we lived for three years. Uh, that was uh, Jean-Louis Trintignant reading part of Proust, but then a lot. He's great, and the is spectacular, wonderful. Gratitude for that. And he's excellent here too. Uh, he's the sensible, <laughs> he's the sensible one. Feminist taking the walk, uh, he's the son of a bitch uh, <laughs> in that interpretation. So again, it's complex because he's not he's not going along the plan. Uh, Sabine has decided, okay, let's they, they will marry. Um, she's pushing this thing in various bizarre directions sometimes. Uh, 
she says, okay, so let's let's push it. Uh, um, let's go outside, the, the party, what they need, let's... Um, have lunch, I'm not sure if she's... No, she's, she's selling him an object and that attracts her, the fury of her employer. She's working in an antique shop and she's making this deal on the side, not to make money, but to benefit Edmund, a future husband. <laughs> um, and the owner of the shop finds a bottle of wine. Probably a bit more pion. Why? It's a problem. 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 It's a I'm just playing the fool here. Uh, and then her birthday party, she's organizing a birthday party, even if she's, she's without a job. Um, so she has to use her uh, reserve fund. And furthermore, Edmund is not coming. It's coming very late. She's upset, she's crying. Seeing so this, this, this tension, this feeling, a mixed bag of emotions. Uh, uh, uncertitude, je ne sais quoi, and finally, I'm not sure if the good marriage uh, will happen. So, um, mm. an outre situation. <laughs>